Hello everyone, my name is Megan Lavota. I'm an ENFJ, and today I'm here with Taylor from Flow State, who's an ESTP, and we're going to be discussing sort of the similarities, differences between ESTP, ENFJs, we share all the same cognitive functions, we're both extroverts, and so at a first glance, you might see some similarities between how we act. So yeah, how's it going? Good, you? Good, and I um, also, if you aren't already subscribed, the channel will be linked below. So, what's it like being an ESTP? A lot of yeast, a lot of YOLO. Um, I don't really have a reference point to, to explain, but compared to ENFJ, it looks to me like, uh, I mean, honestly, you guys look like one of the most stressful types to be. I, I, yeah. I wouldn't trade spots with you. It, yeah. it just, it looks like a lot of sort of social self-imposed social responsibility yeah is the impression that i get from enfj so i think that the difference uh the, the most striking difference there between us would be that i just really don't feel that burden yes and so actually i kind of just want to directly ask you do you think that i am an estp i don't <laughs> can you explain to the people <laughs> i don't feel like i need to <laughs> well people i get that and so I'm trying to I mean, also show, why, like... Why are they saying that you are an ESTP? I don't know. Because I... I feel she's, like... She's not. I'm not. Yeah, like, I'm not. But, like, so that's why I realized, like, I haven't ever made a video with, like, an SP to, like, see the differences. Because I feel like maybe if you're just seeing me in one situation on camera, it might look like I'm using, like, a lot of SE because I'm, like, looking at the camera. But... I mean, just the fact that you even address that right now shows an FE orientation um, yeah. that that I just wouldn't have. I just wouldn't. I wouldn't touch <laughs> that because it does it. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And so I totally agree that it's very stressful. I guess to be an ENFJ and that a lot of it is self-imposed. But I guess to compare, I would also say that ESTPs, you might be putting yourself in other sort of challenges that I would never put myself through. And, you know, maybe it's sort of a beta quadra thing to even really try and challenge yourself, but maybe yours might be more physical challenges or... I've uh, had a lot of broken bones and, and <laughs> I've probably got way more mug shots than you. Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, and so, I don't know. I feel like on the surface, if you are new to learning about personality type, if you were to read about the stereotypes of an ENFJ and ESTP, they brought, they look completely different. But if you're more in the weeds, you know the cognitive functions, then you might mistake, mistake these people as seeming similar, but so I don't know. And there are, and there are a lot of similarities, but at the end of the day, it's, I mean, and maybe it's because I am one of the two types yeah but it just, it's I, easy I, for me to I tell the difference the, i don't lose it i i it's like really easy for me to tell the difference but what, i feel like a lot of see? people what do i see yeah as What's, the differences yeah um estps it's like you guys learn so much more through trial and error and you're willing to fail more where i feel like i need to mentally prepare for everything and even now a little bit, like I do like to do things on the spot, but even right now, it's like, I don't know necessarily the point of what I'm about to say. And like, I, I kind of. So, so you said, when you texted me earlier, you said that you uh, are on an I love SE kick. <laughs> yeah. What, tell me about that. So I just have been realizing lately so I'll just tell you the exact experience that jogged this for me is that I got my hair cut by an ESFP hairdresser and I was worrying about the future and telling her about like these plans I have for like a couple projects I'm difference working on. number one. Yeah. <laughs> Which by the way, I feel like it's very SE, well SE and I, and I to sort of notice the checkpoints of things, but I noticed that the way that SE users, you'll be like, number one, number two, and I don't know if that's like also your demonstrative TE, but like, 
I don't know, I noticed this ability to sort of be like, number one, number two, or like track an argument. Like, I can't really do that. But anyway, so we, um, yeah, I was talking about like how I had all these plans and I wanted them to go this way and I hope that they go well and everything. And like my ESFB hairdresser told me that I've already been laying the groundwork for these things for years and that the opportunity was now. And so she didn't understand why I wouldn't just take it and be happy and also celebrate my wins. And like, I don't celebrate my wins. As soon as I get there, more, the path, I start looking toward the future again. Like, do you, do you bemoan your failures? And see, that's the, that's the thing too, is that it's really hard if someone were to ask me about my failures, sorry about the sound guys, but if someone were to ask me about my failures, I wouldn't even really know what to say. And like, that's not to say that I don't fail. It's just that I don't, I mean, I don't put myself in as risky situations. And I also, I don't know, everything's a learning experience. And so I think that's one thing that we probably do both believe is that everything's a learning experience, but like the way that I do it is different. I don't know. But like my ESFP hairdresser was telling me, she's like, you can't think about the what ifs of what you're going to do in January, whenever you aren't even there yet. And my, my thinking was, well, this is what will happen in January unless I decide something now that will shift that path. So I do have to think about it now or else that's just going to be the inevitable problem that I'll have. And you know, <laughs> you're way better with your NI than I am, but I've found in my own life that, um, that I can't possibly predict what's going to happen or how things will play out well enough to really, I, I'm not strategic, I'm tactical all the yeah. way. And, and you know, the interview question, if where do you see yourself in five years? If at any point in my life, you'd ask me that question, my answer would never have aligned with hmm. the reality. So um, to me, I feel almost, it feels almost uh, hubristic of me to think that hmm. I can actually predict and control the future to that extent. Now, Interesting. <laughs> I, 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 you probably can better than I can. Well, yeah, because I mean, this is pretty much what I expect, like, my life has been like pretty much what I planned for myself years ago. Like, not me. Yeah. And I mean, it's funny you say hubris because I do think that that is a characteristic of sort of like unhealthy ENFJs. Like, That's they are that anything. way. I, well, yeah, but I think that stereotypically, like, I don't know. I see your point that like to think that you know what's going to happen and to worry about it, it could definitely seem that way. But somewhere between uh, not planning at all and, and planning compulsively is the sweet spot. <clears throat> and I think that, that I, I live too far on the on the in the moment side for sure, but but I don't you... trust my ability to do it in the moment. Well, uh, you know, everyone's sweet spot is different, but I, I yeah. think that probably most of your viewers and most people in typology uh, are more intuitive, they're probably yeah. going to be more on the opposite end of the spectrum. They need to live more in the moment. They need to trust themselves and just do some things instead of trying yeah. to plan and plan and plan. Because you can't ever have something so well planned out that it's it's settled, you know? Yeah, and I think that one of the main reasons why I mentally prepare for so many things is because whenever something throws me for a loop, then I don't know what to do. So that's why I know what to expect so that that's why ENFJs can seem really like put together and like on and stuff. But like, that's because that's what we want you to see. Like, I, I don't know if you've been close enough with an ENFJ to see this side, but like when they're alone, they're probably worrying about some shit. <laughs> like, like you see the nice, like prepared version. Yeah, like, I know, I know a lot of ENFJs real well and uh, it's, it's a riot. What is the most, Head over there. Sure. I mean, no, maybe, go ahead. I don't want that to fall. We gotta find a new spot, I think. Okay, that's fine. I can I can edit this.
So another difference between ENFJs and ESTPs is that I was literally just ignoring the fact that there was a loud train. Can't do it. I can't do it. Yeah. I, and that's maybe how NJs try to control things. I'm like, I'm just going to talk really loud and so I can outdo that train. And did you see the uh, <laughs> either of the trucks go by? There's two trucks and then there's a dude on a bicycle that had like light up neon wheels that went by. You didn't see any of that. You're fucking with me. No, I swear to God. This is the West Bottoms. There's shit like that around here. Oh my God. Okay, well, I have no clue if that was true or not. Okay, um, so question. What, in your opinion, is the most annoying thing about ENFJs? So I've got in my uh, in my ex-wife's family, the patriarch is is an ENFJ, and so there's I've been annoyed with ENFJs a lot. <laughs> um, Give us some advice too, maybe, or actually school us first. Okay, so I'm trying to figure out how to say this without sounding conceited as fuck, but that's okay. Don't try to go toe to toe with me with the SC. <laughs> um, the, the, the all caps text, the yelling until your voice gets hoarse in the phone, it's it's not it's not working. It's, it probably works. <laughs> it probably works with a lot of other people, but I'm just not buying it at all. Buying what? What is it that you think? I mean, the the, the, the intimidation. It doesn't. Oh, it's oh, not oh. effective. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I get interesting because whenever I, get I that do that. Whenever I do that, I'm not trying to intimidate. I'm trying to be heard. And it's probably more of a guy-to-guy -guy thing. Yeah. 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 But, um, but yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's the, I don't even know if that's the well, most yeah. annoying thing, but that's something that my advice would be, you gotta, you gotta play to your strengths and, and if, if you're having a headbutt with an ESTP, your strength isn't going to be force. It's going to yeah. be uh, it, it's that sort of maneuver, right? You're more maneuverable, um, a little yeah. bit, uh, socially savvy. You play, you politic better. You do things like that better. Yeah. Um, but just a straight head on charge, that's... Yeah, that's, and I feel like I only do that if I feel so misunderstood and so unseen that I feel like I have to scream in order to be heard or something or if I'm just so angry or like sometimes I'll raise my voice and not even realize that I'm raising my voice and let me put it back in context uh-huh most of like 99% of the time he and I get along great yeah so this is a rare occasion um, we're, we're not screaming at each other all the time yeah and I'd say one of the things about ESCPs that can make it I guess difficult to get along with an ENFJ or is like a difference is like the polar FI um, ESTPs, I feel like, can sometimes be, like, poor judges of character or, like, not really know what they want and, like, test people around them in order to figure out what they want. And so that can feel like a game to an ENFJ or to any feeler, really, where that's, like, a main difference is... I know. <laughs> well, you wanted the cool background. This place is awesome. It is, it is pretty cool. And, and it, but it kind of is, it kind of is. And it's not an intentional one. It's something that we end up, I mean, we're just, we're feeling around for options. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So can you explain in your own words, like a lot of people talk about how NE is really like possibilities and like it is, but SE also is about options. So like how is options like for you? Because we don't, we don't manifest the options. We don't create the options. The options are out there. Um, yeah. and, and so it's sort of, you know, feeling in the dark, what you just described. That's, that's we're not creating possibilities or ideas out of, out of our own head. This is already out there. We're just finding it. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, what are some things that you feel like people don't understand about ESTP? We can be smart. I <laughs> see. I feel like that's obvious, but maybe not online. 
Like, well, if you read an ESTP type description, a generic one, they're almost all stupid. They're yeah. they're really they're really basic. Uh, it's it's just it's the jock stereotype. Yeah. And I think that there's a, a layer there. I mean, TI tool. We're calculating shit in a way that's not described in your generic descriptions. And that's the thing too is that I. ENFJs, they might seem calculated, and maybe you can argue that they are, but in my opinion, like, I'm not calculated. Like, I'm reacting to you, I'm reacting to the emotional environment. I feel like ENFJs are very influential, yes. but people think that that is manipulation, and sure, there are ENFJs that can be really manipulative, but at least for me, like, I'm not, like, my TI is not strong enough to be, like, in my head calculating, like, I'm going to push this button and this is going to happen, like, the way that ESTPs do. Like. <laughs> we, we do calculate it more, but you guys are just naturally better at it. I mean, yeah. you have so I don't need information to automatically. <laughs> yeah. Also, another thing is, like, for me, my TI, it's very narrow about whatever I feel like. I... I use my TI based on what I think is going to help people and so you guys might think my TI is really good or something because I know about cognitive functions but if you were to ask me about something else like I like very much dive into what I'm interested in and become an expert in it but if you were to ask me about anything else I probably don't know like so would you say like for you that your TI is more of like a tool that you can use generally like even if you've never had some time with the topic or like what is that like for you? Yeah I, I can I figure things out quickly. Like even just now he asked me if I wanted to do another video with him about some other topic and I don't know what I think about it yet because I would have to like do like lots of research on all of the variables so that I don't say something that's gonna hurt someone because I before that's why you're not an ESTP yeah and it's like my TI since it's like the last I have to consider everyone's FE viewpoint before I even come to my own conclusion so whenever I do come to a conclusion I can seem really like intense about it but that's only because I've spent hours filtering through everyone's FE in order to find one but like and that's also why if you disagree with an ENFJ, they're more likely to be like sensitive about it because they were like, hey, well, I did all this research for hours or something. Where like, it's not really the case with ESTPs. Not at all, no. Um, I haven't done, I mean, just aside from my familiarity with the topic, I've done no research on it. And I plan to do none, and I don't care about anyone else's opinion. I'm putting mine out there. I'm not, rep I don't feel like I'm representing people. I'm representing so Taylor. So what gives you the, the the right or the confidence, which that might be a bad word choice, but like the right or the confidence to feel like, or like to have an opinion on something that you don't know awesome. much about? <laughs> I feel like everybody is equally entitled to have an opinion on things. Okay. Right? At, just at the very basic level, everybody's opinion or right to an opinion is equally valid. Mm -hmm. Now, from there, you can sort of filter out opinions, you know, some obviously fail logic tests um you know th there's just a lot of ways to filter that up but at the foundational level everybody's got the it's the same right to have an opinion and to voice that opinion so okay. if i put my opinion out on youtube then i've opened my opinion up to criticism people can help refine it they can show me where i'm wrong um they can mm -hmm. validate it but mm -hmm. either way it's starting from uh, basically equality yeah, and I think, you know, ENFJs and ESTPs both really tend to care about freedom of speech and, like, everyone being allowed to have an opinion and, like, all that. But, like, it's interesting because, like, FE as an extrovert judging function, like, I'm thinking about a conclusion, like, for the tribe, for the people around me, and so I don't even, I don't think about my opinion unless I see a need for it for the group. And it's the backwards process where you think about your opinion, you don't think about how it impacts the group until you toss it over to the group and then see what they have to say. Right. And like you're more open to changing it sure. than, than how I would be. Because if I have an opinion, it's not just mine, it's what I think is best 
for everyone. And if you disagree, then maybe you are shoving down this sliver of people's reality or something. And so then I feel the responsibility to stand up for them, even if it's not even my opinion sometimes. I, I also give myself a lot of slack to be wrong and make mistakes, which is, yeah. is something ENFJs don't do. No. <laughs> so I think maybe to end this, we should maybe talk about some of our similarities or how we can come off similar where I think in general, the main thing that comes to mind is like with SE and FE is that we both tend to be pretty charismatic and you know, we can make people really like us immediately, sort of. Would you agree with that? I would agree with that. <laughs> you, don't have to, you don't have to soften it with that sort of. <laughs> And we think that we're great too. Yeah. What else? What do you think? Uh, I think that we're. I mean, I think that we're about to get into quadrant values. Yeah. Let's quick. just sort of talk about it right now. Okay. I mean, and see, here's another thing with my inferior TI, is that I know about beta quadra. I've studied it, but because I don't have the list in front of me, I'm like so worried about saying it on video just in case there's one person out there that says, Megan, you were wrong, you missed this thing. And there will be, there yeah. will be. Because there, <laughs> there, are, there are socionics uh, Pharisees, I mean, dogmatic, oh, yeah. dogmatic socionics people. So we will miss shit, <laughs> we will fuck some things up and they can call us out, I don't give a shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so do you have anything to mention from memory because, or do you have your phone where you can look it up? I mean, yes and yes. We can start with, uh, I mean, the way that all the sort of uh, values form into a cohesive image in my mind is uh, survival of the fittest. We're aristocratic, we're competitive. Um, the, the losers will get left behind, but everybody has an equal right to, you know, try to compete to be a winner. And it's very sort of sort of a survival of the fittest. Is, yeah, is how I really see it. And yeah, and I I think that if you're an NFJ and you might be thinking like, well, I hate hierarchy, or like that doesn't make sense for me. Like, think about how ENFJs will or INFJs too. And let me know if you agree with this, but I know at least for the NFJs, we'll think things like oh, well, there's classism and there's sexism and there's, like, we're very aware of these categories, which is, like, very aristocratic. And, like, NFJs tend to really grasp things like sociology, like, quickly, and they'll know, like, okay, these are the people that hold the power and these are the people that don't. And, like, maybe STPs are more likely to try and fight the system themselves, where NFJs are like, this system's unfair or something. Like it's still it's still focused on like the power. We're all kind of social justice warriors. Yeah, we're... yeah, we are. Like, and can you? I feel like people might not really grasp that STPs are that way. So can you sort of explain? I mean, I don't know that off? all STP. I mean, STPs certainly don't don't come out the shoot that way. Like you care NFJs, about justice, the, though. But we care about right. We care about justice, and we see when we see shits shits wrong, um, then at that point we get involved so so for instance for me criminal justice is a big thing because i've been in the system i've seen how absolutely fucked up and important it is before i mean before my legal shit show i didn't think that racism was a real problem anymore hmm, and if i heard the phrase institutional racism i thought people just finding something to whine about it's done oh. but now that i've been in the criminal justice system and i've seen the way that the different sentencing ways how myself and another white guy had by far the worst charges in the whole jail and we both got probation and they're sending blacks and mexicans to yeah. prison just just like that pratt county kansas that's you interesting so i feel like would you say you needed the hands-on experience yeah so you were maybe less curious than like maybe how an ENFJ would to like, if somebody was whining, an ENFJ would probably want to know, why are you whining? Like, I want to like include that in, but to a fold as well. People are always whining about, I mean, everybody's got a million things to whine about to try to get their way. So I don't, I don't care about everyone's complaint. I don't listen to it. Um, and I just assume, you know, it's just whatever it is, what it is. Okay. People, Categorize those things as like 
oh, someone's just butt hurt. Yeah, Because for sure. I'll say that like ENFJs on the other hand, when we think someone's butt hurt, probably are judging you. We just won't say it. <laughs> like we have FI ignoring. Like we think it's stupid to whine about something that's just your problem, you know? And like, I don't know, I feel like we both really care about justice, but ENFJs are more likely to like tiptoe around people's triggers, even if we think it's annoying that we have to. Or like maybe we'll have an unpopular opinion about something and we won't share it because all we know is it's going to set off this group of people and they aren't even going to hear us anyway. And so why bother? I don't know. And I, and I mean, there is some, we share that to an extent. Yeah. I typically won't share uh, my opinion unless I think there's a reason to. Yeah, that's true. There, there's no reason to throw an opinion out there that people who agree with me are already agree people who disagree with me are gonna disagree and then you know people who dislike me are just gonna have a, a, a snack point to throw back yeah so if it's a lose lose neutral situation i just keep my thoughts to myself yeah and i will say that i think that's sort of what you were talking about the about the criminal justice system i feel like nj's in general probably grasp those things from a young age just from observing and having a lot of why questions and asking people and annoying people about it would you agree with that i don't know a lot of young nj's but that seems right well i'll just say that whenever i was a kid i remember asking my mom like oh there's a there's a dollar store why is there not a penny store like how come like if we're able, to, I, I pretty much I was thinking as like a 10 year old, like if we're able to make all of these goods be affordable for $1, all at the same price. And like, why, I was just like, why is there poor people? Like, like I just was like really confused by that. I was <laughs> confused know? why there was shit in the dollar store that wasn't a dollar. <laughs> well, yeah, I was actually confused by that too, but I probably didn't notice it the same as you, but like, I just like, I don't know. I've always like, wanted to know the why behind why <laughs> the why behind why the world works that way but I do think that okay like if you are a loved one of an ESTP or an ENFJ and somebody hurts you then like they better get the fuck out of our way <laughs> like we'll fuck them up. yeah but also at the same time if you are our friend and you're fucking up then we'll tell you and I feel like we probably both give our friends like tough love when they need it. I mean, I look at it this way. If yeah. I'm walking around with a booger hanging out of my nose, I want my friend to tell me. That. Yes. Yes. And, and so that's where I think that a lot of people don't understand the, uh, you know, telling people the harsh reality of the situation. Like if you're being an idiot, you're being an idiot and it's not yeah. a personal slight. Everybody's an idiot sometimes, yes. most of the time, whatever. It's just, <laughs> You know, we're, we're pointing out a problem so that you can fix it if you are so inclined or you can keep being an idiot. Yeah, that's a really good way of putting it because I feel like sometimes it could seem like really pushy or like that we're trying to control people and I don't care what you do. Like, like, like you said, like if you want to walk around with a booger hanging out, then go ahead. Like I literally Over don't, <laughs> like I literally don't care. But also like I just, my number one assumption is like I never intend to you know hurt anyone i never intend to look like an idiot and so i do want my friends to tell me because if i'm doing something wrong then you know i'd like to grow but i can't like i assume that other people aren't aware i guess of their flaws because i don't know well and if if you're if your feelings get hurt because i i observe the reality to you if i say there's a booger in your nose and that hurts your feelings and you're upset at me for it, then at that point I sort of feel like you deserve to have your feelings hurt because you're an idiot for thinking that you're this pristine bundle of perfection. Ah, uh, okay. So, so at that point it sort of flips on itself. That makes sense. And, you know, I've heard people say to me before, like, the idea that if, trust me, Megan, people know their flaws, like, you don't have to tell them. Like, I've been told that. And it's like, how do I know that you're that's, working on it? That's not true, though, because yeah. I've been very not self-aware in the past. Yeah. I'm still learning, like, these glaringly obvious things about myself every day that, you know, it's just... 
other yeah. people would assume I knew, but I didn't. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so, yeah, I assume that people like aren't aware, but I don't know, maybe other types are different, but, but yeah, like I feel like that sort of protectiveness quality, sort of mama bear, I don't know. But here's something that um, I think that ESTPs do, probably ENFJs don't, is I, if somebody's gonna be that sort of sensitive, I know that we're not gonna be good friends. And I'd rather get that shit out of the way quickly. I want to know up front so that we don't spend too much time trying to be friends when ultimately you're sensitive and I'm abrasive. And so I'd rather yeah. just have this issue quickly. You know, I I don't relate in the sense where like I am friends with sensitive people and that's not a deal breaker for me. But what I do relate to is that if I get a sense that I'm not going to get along with someone, I kind of, or like, one, I want to know that sooner rather than later so I don't waste my time. But also, I want to maintain respect with everyone. And so I want to have sort of a level, sorry, I want to keep people at arm's length if I know that that's what's best. And I am totally cool, like, I'm totally cool with moving people up and down notches pretty much until eternity until eternity like like i don't know do you relate to that you know what i mean by like the notches thing should we pause it and move to the car sure okay let's, let's do it we, yeah. okay. okay so we moved locations again because i guess taylor's se noticed that there was a loud sound what was i saying i feel like i was saying something so important but regardless we talked it out on the uh, Coming yeah, back to the car. but regardless, we're about to just sort of read off the beta values to end this. But decisive, Mary. Oh, actually, before you get into that, I remember what I was going to say is that um, pretty much the thing is is that if an ENFJ thinks that you are, or like an ENFJ probably won't want to like tiptoe around your triggers very much but we won't be as bothered as an ESTP would. But what I do think that a lot of ENFJs feel is when people make a personal problem into a public problem when it shouldn't be, or, or if you are one person and you try and speak on behalf of a movement, pretty much if you're trying to use your FI to make a big deal out of things, like that definitely, bothers me when you take a personal interest and and try to play it up for, in, in a way that's dishonest really yeah yeah and i mean yeah like dishonest in like a ti way too but yeah which yeah anyway so we're gonna go into these values would you like to I'm, read them all right decisive merry and aristocratic are our values according to the rhinan dichotomies Yes, and we were talking a bit about aristocratic earlier. Which I think is the, uh, is, is very much survival of the fittest. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's hierarchy oriented, so there is a hierarchy. Um. Yeah, and like, so deltas are also aristocrats, and a way that I sort of think about it too is that like our NF side is together, and then our ST side is together, and so it's like... The ST is like, this is how the world works. And then NF is like, and what does that mean? Or like, how should it work? And like, whether you're an STP or an NFJ, like these are still like diff two different parts of our psyche that are going back and forth where it's like, I might, I prefer to sort of theorize about how things should be, but I still at the end of the day have to like deal with the real world, like how it is. I don't know. It, it seems like the real world is SCTI, mm -hmm. and the uh, FENI is is the ideal. So SCTI I see is now. This is this is reality. Uh, FENI is the ideal. Would you say that for you, your FENI comes through reflecting how things went, or do you not really reflect on how things went? Um, I think that my NI probably does more but no because i wonder because i feel like you know you get that ni insight from the event 
that you experienced? I, um, I don't, I, I just don't reflect that much. <laughs> but see, it's interesting. I don't really reflect. I plan. I don't think about what happened really. Um, I'll replay things, especially if they've gone wrong. But... I don't even know how to replay things. Like, oh, you don't have any SI. At well, all. yeah, like, because I remember takeaways from things to where I'll say, I don't remember what happened, but I remember I felt like this. And I remember that you seem to be coming at me from this sort of angle. So actually, this is a interesting way I thought of explaining it is that my ENFP friend told me yesterday that she failed a micro expressions quiz where it was just like a face of someone who looked sad and I she did would be really good yeah and she didn't know that they were sad and i was like clearly they're sad and i was thinking that probably enfjs and estps probably are the best at like seeing a face and knowing like you're happy you're oh, sad I'm sorry about that throw that out the door that's gross oh what? that's 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 my old chicken oh. from lunch that's fine <laughs> um but yeah, so I I sort of realized that like, yes, the SE part is looking at the face and being like, that's, or, or like looking at the face and getting the face accurately and not projecting whatever your bullshit is on the face, like actually looking at it. And I feel like the NI is like the information that you get, like the meaning behind that. And so it's almost like when I look back, I don't remember anyone's faces. I don't remember anything. I just remember the information of like, they were sad. So, yeah. If that I don't. Makes sense. I, yeah, it does, and I don't. I don't really recall other people's emotions so much, mm. um, unless unless it's 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 for whatever reason an important part of okay. of the situation. I did I did read somewhere. I've actually read this. I've I've tripped across this a couple times that ESTPs are the best type or SLEs in sociology. So mm -hmm. the best type at reading and interpreting micro expressions, body language, things like that, which would make sense. And it would also make sense then that, that ENFJs would be right there because yeah. it's got to be an SEF, it's an SEFE uh, interaction. So yeah, if well, we're the best and you've got the same, it, you know, functions just with the extroverted ones yeah. swapped around, it's got to be. Yeah. And we're right both there. extroverts. And so we're focused on what's going on like outside of us mm -hmm. still. And like, yeah, like I've never understood why people don't know if somebody likes them because I feel like that's really obvious. But then like my NFPs friends will like ask me like, I don't know if this person likes me or like this. And I'm like, well, what did they seem like when you were with them? And it's like, I don't know. And it's like, don't you know? You know what? Know. I can't always tell that. Really? I, ab about me. Right. Um, but if I you were to look tell, at other people. If I can, if I see someone walking across the street, I can tell what sort of state they're in themselves mm -hmm. i can't tell nearly as easily how they are at me okay and See, i think that's an fi thing probably well yeah i feel like i can feel well the position between like the position someone's taking like to me mm -hmm. and so one thing with enfjs is that sometimes we can be really sensitive and think like if you're having a bad day we might think that that's us or like that you're reacting to us like we'll get like the correct information from your face but i feel like we are like used to influencing things that we like can think oh are you mad at me or something <laughs> like right. and I, and <laughs> that is something that in a, infjs do a lot yeah. more than the SCPs. and i tend to actually probably underplay that and i think it's an ni thing to a big extent because i'm not tracking things in time or on a continuum to near the same extent that you are I take each individual instance uh, kind of as an isolated pocket. And so I know, just in day-to-day -day life, I know that if I'm an asshole to somebody, it's probably, on any given day, just a coworker, whatever, it's probably not about them. I'm probably having a bad day, they're in my space, they're interacting with me when I'm mad. And so it, I know that it's normally not about them, it's not personal. And so I apply the same logic to when people are, are salty with me. So yeah, I if, feel if, like I do that's a similar thing where I apply the same logic to other people, mm. which isn't always true. Well, and <laughs> that, it's the, I think it's the sort of delta, low key, polite but cold sort of interactions. Those are the ones that I can miss when people are polite, 
but kind of standoffish a little bit, I'll miss the, the subtle standoffish over time and just, you know, they'll feel like they're obviously not being friends with me and I'll be like, oh, I thought we were just perfectly fine acquaintances. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, do you think we should read these aloud or what? I don't know. We can. We can. See, again, I'm bad at just like looking at something and knowing what to do. I have to like think it through. Like even little things like this. I can't pick up a phone and just know what to do. And if you ever see me do that, it's because while somebody else was talking or while something else was happening earlier, I was thinking about what I was going to about to do. You know? Oh, I wasn't listening. I was... <laughs> no, that's fine. <laughs> All right. The Rhinen Dichotomies. Yeah. Well, I got onto Wikisocian, and this, this website is just enormous. So I can just sort of spitball things that I think about betas while you are looking. Okay. Is that, so... With, spitball. So with, N, with NINTI, it's like we seek to understand very deeply what the truth is and so yeah like it's like a very precise almost philosophical I don't know if you would agree I, with that with what sorry cool. <laughs> I was just saying that NI and TI being together is like really wanting to understand truth like and not wanting to fuck with the truth like not wanting to just assume that something's true if it's not true well I, yeah and i think that there is a truth too yeah i think that's the sort of ti component is that there is truth and do you it's, believe in universal truth yes whoops i feel like that was, okay there we go yeah like i believe in universal truth and i seek to find it and like i might have my perspective you might have yours but like um at the end of the day, I almost feel like truth is like an energy that like impacts everyone, whether or not we choose to believe it. I think that if we have differing truths, one of us is wrong. Yeah. And and that, but however, that that a universal truth is that everybody has a very fundamentally different perspective. Yes. So we're demonstrating a truth about truths. Yeah, and so I feel like if two people, okay, so that also that i fundamentally agree with explains why enfjs are the way they are is that if you have a perspective that i've not considered and it is different than what my perspective is and i know that only one of us is true then my instinct is to listen to you and try and hear you and like build a bridge to you even if i'm even if my like latent ti like thinks that you aren't making sense I feel like in order to actually find the truth, I can't just pretend like your perspective doesn't exist. Which maybe, it's like you don't pretend their perspective doesn't exist either, but maybe you don't need to like really interact with I don't, them. I don't feel like, I feel, I mean, my orientation to truth is that, is such that it doesn't need a bridge. Like if, if my least favorite person on earth tells me, you know, something that, you know, corrects me on something and they're right it doesn't matter we don't need a connection i almost feel like then in order to really know if that truth is true you need to engage in the se to some extent like it's more than just ti thinking it i think yeah it needs to be it needs to be uh verifiable because if it's true it will work in your real life Look, and it'll be like self-evident this way. was my this is like the foundation of my entire uh, uh, issue with C.S. Joseph mm -hmm. is because just something you need to be grounded in something in some sort of reality. Mm -hmm. You can't just spew, you can't just puke out in the street and say, "Well, look, since it's not self-contradicting in and of itself, it must be right." That's not how shit works. And it's yeah, just because something is contained, just because you could say this is the system. And the thing is, is since you already brought that up, it's like, it's not consistent with... It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's not consistent. It's not it's. consistent. <laughs> like, even if you say, this is the system. And, again, I'm not trying to be rude, as I've said this entire video. I don't give a shit. <laughs> but the thing is, it's like, 
you can't source something and then have you can't source something and misinterpret the source if you were to write a paper and source something and then misinterpret what your source is or like put it in a false light you would fail the paper but, like i don't understand but then chalk it up to innovation like this is just in intellectually dishonest through all the layers and i honestly i don't really understand like ENFJs keep a lot of their thoughts hidden because they want to be able to trust you before they can tell you. And then once they trust you, they'll be like telling you all this shit that maybe you didn't even know they thought or something. But like, the thing is, I really don't understand. I fundamentally don't understand how somebody can like just say something so wrong that like you could so easily go into the SE and check. Like, you can go check. <laughs> like, I've already done the checking on a handful <laughs> of things. On my channel, I mean, the, yeah, but the that's, sperm yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. No, but that's like an example. And it's like, I think that certain people, they take advantage of the fact that people are lazy. They aren't going to figure out the truth. That they aren't going to look at the sources. But the thing is, is like, if your sources are wrong and what you're saying is inconsistent. Well, like, okay. I'm not saying that the sources are wrong. But like, if you, what you're saying is not consistent with. Really, it's just fragmented. You, you can't attribute something to a source just because you use the same word, right? You can't. Yeah. You can't. You can't camouflage your idea under somebody else's term. Yes. Yes. And then Trojan horse that shit through and attribute it to them. Still, it's not yes. an attribution. It's a fucking fraud. It's a lie. It's a lie. Like the thing is, guys. Like I tell you all the time on my channel that what I'm saying is sort of my own interpretation slash I'm telling you that this is inspired by Carl Jung's cognitive functions. You can go read the book, Psychological Types, and see for yourself. I also really like Lenore Thompson is like my favorite. But like the, the thing is, is that you can't, it's like you're saying someone's name for credibility sake, but you didn't actually do your homework. Well, at the end of the day, all anybody can really offer is their own opinion. Especially on something that's as as subjective as typology, you cannot get rid of the element of subjectivity. So it's like piggybacking off of somebody right. else that has like a good reputation. But but to know? that extent, like since it is subjective, your your own integrity is critical. So you saying this is my interpretation, it's not just window dressing. It's important. It demonstrates what you're offering yes. and your own credibility because. If somebody comes to you for, for services or whatever, they're coming to you for your yes. opinion. Yes, yes. They're, they're coming to Megan Lavota. They're not coming right. to me to speak on behalf of Carl Young. Right, and they're not coming to you because you've got the special type ruler, <laughs> you know? You, <laughs> you can't lobotomize them and poke their TI and go, here it is, motherfucker. <laughs> it's not, so, so a yeah. person's credibility. What were you saying? This better a person's credibility especially in a field like this is critical. Um, and, and yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, absolutely. And I feel like it is very, like, I almost just wonder how, maybe I just underestimate how much people delude themselves on purpose to what the reality is, because I guess I'm just, I mean, I'm an intuitive, I can be aloof and stuff, but whenever you can go and find things that are exist, like, I don't fuck with that. You know what I mean? Like, I think that a lot of people, um, it allows people to defer responsibility to an authority. Yeah. So I think to an ex a big extent, it's sort of a, a social responsibility exchange in a person's own head of, well, I'm trusting what so-and-so says, you know, yeah. I, I, it's I like trusted this. It's, it's a shortcut and it defers responsibility. But at the end of the day, you, 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 nobody's going to be responsible for you or your own life or your views, your actions, your belief, or any of that shit, except for you, no matter how much they might claim the contrary. And also, I think this is an example of the fact that we don't value TE. Like, <laughs> like... Yeah, probably also that. Yeah, but... Gosh, what was I going to say? Also, I don't know if you relate to this, but I live my life in knowing that anything I do to someone could be exposed. Yes. Like, anything I say to you, you can go and tell a million people if you want. Like, and so that's why I feel like I'm sort of always on and, like, maybe careful with how I talk to people. But, like, 
I nothing is nothing is hidden like for me like I'm always aware like that my behavior speaks for itself if I'm out in public and I do something I'm like aware someone could have taken a photo you know what I mean mm -hmm. and so it also baffles me this is I would say maybe an SETI valuing thing it baffles me when people just like blatantly lie about something that they like literally did and like people have literal <laughs> evidence about. Hold your phone. Hold <gasps> yeah. your phone. We've got the sun behind us, so I'm just gonna okay. loop around. Okay. But um gosh, all this moving. See, this is also like is this S E of you or something? Yeah, it is. It's like why do we keep changing locations? Well the sun was going down behind us. Okay. See? Okay. Isn't that better? So ah, sure. It's fine. Okay, so, yeah. Um, yeah, so we kind of talked about how, oh, yeah, that is better, I guess. Okay, um, also, I think it was a very F.E. valuing of us to, like, not really like when people make their personal emotions, like, speak for the whole group. Like. It feels manipulative and disingenuous. Yes. Yes. So, and then also, okay, do you know so we're Mary that's and, what I just had okay pulled let's up. just finish that I keep I'm very long-winded it's cool uh, Mary good at noticing emotional background and perceiving emotional aspects separate from the activity versus serious is bad at no noticing the emotional background and do not separate emotional aspects from the activity Okay, and so Sirius, that is TE and FI users, right? Right. And Mary would be Alpha and Beta Quadra. Right. So... And I mean, you can just, to, without getting mm -hmm. into the to the weeds too much, you can just, you can just feel it between the two quadras, right? The alphas and Betas, when we interact, when we talk, we're loud, we're jovial, there's an emotional atmosphere that's sort of fostered uh, as, as almost a separate entity from the activity. Yeah. Gammas, deltas, they don't do that, especially especially gammas. <laughs> yeah, and I feel like something is like if you were to go out or like to a party or like somewhere with either of us or like a beta, and or if fun. you and if you were not having fun and you were in the corner, we would be the people to be like, stop being lame. Like we are that I yeah, I am that And person. it also annoys me if you're gonna ruin everyone's fun by being over there. And see that's another like F E thing is like um we can think we can feel that you're over there and it's annoying. I don't yeah, I I maybe you don't I, feel it as much as me, but I don't feel it as much as you, but I do <laughs> dislike it when when somebody is intentionally interjecting their own bad emotion their own bad vibes into a group and it's gonna drag the whole group down. If somebody's comes into a room full of people and says, eh, my cat just died. <laughs> it's like, well, get the fuck out of here and deal with your cat. You this know? That's, this uh, reminds me of, like, my birthday. I had, like, a birthday get-together last year, and my ENFP friend was there, and then my INFJ girlfriend was there, and they had just met, and the ENFP kept talking to individuals, trying to get to know each person individually. And the INFJ, she was telling me, I'm so nervous, like, why like what is she doing or like she kept like breaking up the group and then also there was like three times she went to the bathroom and cried over something and the the INFJ was like I can't have fun like what the fuck what, what the fuck is she doing like why does she keep leaving and for, like it didn't really bother my fun necessarily three times it's annoying yeah just a shitload of crying and also party. NE will react to nothing like, I'll be like, what just happened? And she'll say, like, I just realized something. <laughs> like, like, oh, did someone text you? No. <laughs> like, my emotions are always, like, a direct sort of response to something that just happened, typically. Oh, my God, that lady just popped a squat, I think. Oh. Um, oh, I don't know. Maybe. She did, the one in the green shirt did. Uh, gross. But, yeah, that's, like, kind of an example. That's why I chose this part of town. <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah, I've, at various times throughout my life, I've thought that NE is not an actually, actually a cognitive function. I've thought it's imagination. And then at one point, I thought it was anxiety. Um, and now you know. I mean, and I think that it has a lot of 
both of those components, but. Yeah. So, okay, so that's Mary. Anything else to say on Mary? Nah. Mary, decisive versus judicious. I forget which one we are. We're decisive. Okay. Alpha and deltas are judicious. So judicious, not us, is their natural state is relaxation and they work mm. best when they can relax beforehand and are mobilized only for the duration necessary. So that's SI that's, and NE. Right. That's actually something, it's funny, I've never made the connection that that's the same thing, but I've noticed before that SI and E users, it's like they want to be comfortable so that their mind can wander about possibilities. But we, it's almost like, it's like I want my mind to be clear so that I can deal with whatever's going on. So decisive, our natural state is readiness. Yeah. And we work best if we are able to start mobilizing in preparation for what they must do. So that's, that's mm -hmm. your preparing right there. Yeah. And like, that's why NJs, even though like we're intuitive, we can be like in our head. It's like sort of, we're trying to completely understand the possibility so that we can reach some sort of Zen state of understanding so that if something were to happen, I could do it. But like, and I'm not trying, and I, I'd be the, the natural state of readiness. I'm just <laughs> always ready. I was born ready. I feel like an ESTP came up with that phrase, but yeah, I mean, that's kind of, and then the the uh, the last one I was going to get to was democratic and aristocratic. Okay. Democrats are alphas and gammas. They perceive and refer to other people and themselves, primarily describing individual personal qualities. Frank, trustworthy, generous, etc which are generally not in connection to any grouping to which they might belong. Okay. And, and aristocrats are inclined to perceive and refer to other people and themselves by means of groups, groupings and categories that they see these people belonging to. So yeah. basically we use stereotypes and they don't. Yeah, kind of. They exist and for a reason. And also, yeah, that's what I was going to say. Do you feel like they exist for a reason? And yeah. like... And I also feel like, in general, groups of people, if they come together, if they are randomly drawn to dress a certain way, then there's probably something in common, like, about them. And so, even though you can't say for sure that, oh, just because you seem this way or just because you're in this group, you are this way, you at least know there's something that drove them to be in that group. A stereotype you know? needs to be understood for what it is. It's a shortcut and an assumption. It's there for a reason. It has truths in it, but it is not the end truth. Yeah. So would you say that you will describe yourself or introduce yourself like with the category categories that you like? I mean, um, I think that my name's Taylor. I'm an ESTP eight wing seven. I've got a felony and ex wife earrings. I work in construction. I'm an <laughs> I'm an but, ENFJ two wing three SXSO entrepreneur, um, bisexual, um, spiritual. Like I, I do like it. it you see it how makes the, it easier. How those things sort of flow, and it makes it easier for you to know who the fuck I am. You know, mm -hmm. like. But yeah. But I fit. I mean, I fit. I fit so many stereotypes of my type that uh, I mm -hmm. feel like it. It would be silly to not stereotype me to some extent. Um, and I'm just. I was mm -hmm. sort of using that as a demonstration. We are both SXSOs. Mm-hmm. I forgot about that. Yeah. That makes us fucking screwy. Yeah. Wait. So what's it like? having being like SP blind, but like as an SE dom. Like I know that those systems don't. 100% connect, but for me, I know like my SI is my blind spot and I'm SP blind. Like I don't care about self-preservation like at all, but like, um, it, it really turns up the volume on impulsiveness, recklessness, sort of the, mm -hmm. the pedal to the metal kind of lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And so how does the SX SO show up for you? 
I feel like we'd have to ask Kat. Yeah, which uh, by the way, <laughs> shout out to Kat if you're watching. This might be a good place to end it, maybe, but I do want to be doing a video about Enneagram interviewing Kat once she... Um, She's the Enneagram whiz. Yeah. What's it? Judici what are we? Judicious. We are... Uh, uh, decisive. We're decisive. Once... We're aristocratic, decisive, ah. and uh, merry. I oh, know, yeah. And so those are the three dichotomies that, that we're in. I was just There's also say, the romance she's ready. style. Oh, yeah. We should talk about that briefly. Okay. Let me find that. So, NFJs are the in socionics. We are the victim type romance style. And um, STVs are the aggressor type romance style. I'll, and I'll, You want me to read this? It's a little blip. Sure. Beta romantic relationships tend to start from intense exchanges of emotions, either either of a playful, aggressive sort, or of a more tormented sort based on personal images of special meaning, romantic in a 19th century sense. The two yeah. sorts merge together to make Beta Quadra most inclined towards romantic courtship in the everyday sense of the term. A relationship is felt to be lacking if not accompanied by intense demonstrations of emotions. Yes. Romantic relationships are also held together by a sense of common goals and purpose and of the other person as the best partner towards achieving them. Betas are the most intense of all quadras in terms of exchanges of emotional and sensual interplay. We are dramatic. Seriously. Kinky. <laughs> Very dramatic as well. And, okay, I just like... I, I, that's so true about like, if things aren't like, if the emotions have died down, even if it's healthy, I feel like there, there's something wrong. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I almost like expect there to be. You ever been in a relationship and things get comfortable and then so you start shit then? Yeah. Well, I feel like I create problems in general all the time as an NJ. Whenever there's no problems, I just will create <laughs> another one. That's what I say before, I said before that intuitives are so creative that they also know how to create problems out of nothing. Um, no, I feel like that's how it is now. I, cause I'm in a comfortable relationship and I've never been in a comfortable relationship to where I've never really had to create shit. And sometimes it's just like, what? And she's an INFJ, so she's beta values too. It's just like, Oh, why do you clean this way? You should do it this this way. Or like, why don't you, why do you always fall asleep on the couch? It's just like shit that we should not even be arguing about, but like, it's just normal. But I also feel like too, it's like, that's how you know I love you is if I care enough to <laughs> argue, right? Yeah. The moment I stop caring to argue, I don't care. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's like, a bad sign. Yeah. Yeah. But... So, anyway, would you say that you're the aggressor since... No. No? I'm oh. the victim. But you're both victim types, but... So that's why I asked between the two of you, because you're both victim it's both. types. It's both. Well, actually, okay, so victims... So the gist of victims is that we don't... Uh, or we look at our partner and figure out how likely is it for them to continue liking us. And we are way more focused on them than on us and so two NJs in a relationship it's like always asking each other do you still care do you still care it's like oh my God. I know yeah and so but then that makes it dramatic still because then it's like <laughs> one of you is trying to guess and then the other tries to get it's like but actually she's the one <laughs> that was the aggressor to me but only because of the the situation is she I mean we were talking for like a week and then we just like jumped into it and then I tried to convince her to move to Kansas City <laughs> so from where? well from Columbia like she uh, she was two years younger than me and she just graduated from a zoo so it wasn't like that big of a deal like to ask her to move here it wasn't like flying her across the country <laughs> sort kind of, of thing what kind of props did you get Props. I don't know. I liked all of the flavors, so I just got whatever. I get tiger pot and mix with silver <laughs> bullet because silver bullets made it oh, ever yeah. clear, and you could get it's one of those. M I Z. One of those. Yep. 
But yeah, like I would say, and then, okay, aggressors, which are SPs, they um, don't doubt their own attraction and are more strategizing, what do I have to do to get what I want? Where NJs are like looking like, over time, will this be a consistent feeling sort of thing? But also something interesting I recently read about that because I was looking that up is it said that NJs are more likely to announce when they were broken up with but they won't announce if uh, they did the breaking up and SPs are opposite. SPs would say, oh yeah, I broke up with her or whatever, but like not let people know if you were broken up with. Is that true? Yeah, I've never heard that, but it sounds true. Yeah, and that's, that's weird to me to realize that, yeah, I have announced like, oh my God, I was broken up with out of nowhere. But I've never said, if I've broken it off with someone, I've not wanted, I like wouldn't want to embarrass them. Well, and I think that, that to me it would feel like, like, so to the extent that aggressors are, are, are figuring out how to get what they want, being mm -hmm. broken up with would be sort of an admission of defeat. Like, fuck, I lost that. Yeah, it's almost I, I didn't, like... I didn't figure out how to how to get this. Oh, yeah. And I, I almost feel like, for me, I feel like it's out of my control sometimes. I will... I don't know. Like, with relationships, I feel like you, e you either are growing toward them or you're growing away from them. And, like, I can't really decide. I don't know. You ha It's more fun when you just go with it. Like, I, I don't want to control how it's going to go. Like, it's either going to keep going or it's not. You know? Yeah. I mean, the older I get, the the more I just don't mm -hmm. talk about it at all. Hmm. I, people, you know, it's, my relationship is nobody's place. Mm -hmm. And nothing good ever comes of starting, you know, the dominoes of, of gossip going. So I just... Yeah. I just don't even start it. So that then if you hear a story come back around, you know that didn't start from you, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anyway... Anything, any last words? That's all I got. All right. Well, go subscribe to him. Go subscribe to me. And uh, like, thank comment. you. Yeah, like, comment. You know, start some shit in the comments if you want. Tell us who you broke up with or who broke up with you. <laughs> yeah, tell us. Tell us. Yeah. Anyway, thank you so much and have a wonderful rest of your day.